Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit enlighten and open the understanding of each of you. Because once this happens, my friend, you can be sure that you are going to break through. Because we, true Christians, live by faith intelligent faith that is rational, a faith that thinks, that analyzes, a faith that meditates, not in a faith that is emotional and sens sensationalist, a faith that a person has the absolute assurance that it is the will of God what they are going to do or what they are doing. This is called intelligent faith. Well, what contradicts the intelligent faith? The emotional faith. The devil created this fake faith. Oh, my grace is sufficient. He got a text from the Bible and said, my grace is sufficient. Let's understand what my grace is sufficient means. The Apostle Paul had a great problem, but a great problem. What was his problem? His problem was due to the revelation or the glorious revelations that he had from God. He went up to the third heaven. Paul saw things that he couldn't even speak about. He heard words that he couldn't even express. Remember when he said there, God has prepared things which no eye has seen or ear has heard. Paul had access to extraordinary things. However, in order for him, Paul, not to fall into the sin of pride and to think he was better, then God allowed him to have there a thorn in the flesh sent by Satan. He didn't know. He didn't know it. He was complaining and fighting against that thorn and prayed to God three times to remove that thorn, but God did not remove it. So God answered and said to him, My child, my grace is sufficient. Keep your thorn there so that you may remain in the faith and living by faith and then take possession of eternal life. So God said to him, my grace is sufficient. Even though you have this thorn, I'm not going to remove it. But my grace is sufficient. My favor is sufficient. So Paul was not in sin. Paul didn't live in sin in order for that thorn to come to him. No, Paul was in a great spiritual condition. But in order for him not to get proud, for him not to become proud, then God gave or allowed the devil to put a thorn in his flesh. So the devil then used this phrase, my grace is sufficient, that came from God to Paul in that specific situation and used it, and is still using it as a doctrine in churches. Oh, my grace is sufficient. So most people who say they believe in God say like this, Oh, you know what? I know that Oh, God knows me, God sees, God tolerates my situation, He knows my weaknesses and so on, as if God would tolerate their sins. However, the person is going down to hell. And that's the reason why they find themselves fallen, prostrated, discouraged, sad, depressed. There is no fountain of life in them. What is in them is a well of losses and sin, a well of rotten water stuck, 
full of worms. Why? Oh, my grace is sufficient. So people accept, they comfort themselves with this phrase which was given in a specific situation to that person who had thorns because of the revelations God had given him. Come on, my friend. Don't fall into this faith, this emotional faith, a faith that is emotional, a faith that has nothing to do with the biblical faith, the faith that is intelligent and rational. God gave us the word, and when you read the word, you have to reason what does that word mean and check it out and evaluate. So when we live in the faith that is rational, then we know that we are in the faith and that God is pleased with our lives. Now, when we are in an emotional faith with the little things here, there, hidden, right? Seasoning, seasoning that emotion of faith or sweetening up that emotion of faith and the person ends up accepting their sins, their little things and big sins as well. And their life is going downhill. Why? Because faith that is intelligent contradicts the emotion of faith. A faith that is emotional, a faith of the heart. So the person that has an emotional faith doesn't have faith to sacrifice their life. They have no faith to sacrifice their sins. No, no way. They, are, they accept, they like feeling it. That, that well-being that is fake, but that makes them lose their salvation. So, my friend, I am saying this to you for your own good. I am trying to help you who are there and you hate me and you speak bad about me. I don't mind it. I don't care if you speak or not. I don't mind. You can say whatever you want there on, on the comments as long as you are not offending me because if you do, I will delete you. I will block you. I will block you. But you can be sure of one thing. You are hearing the truth. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. But the truth sets you free. We are going to be talking about this tonight. By the way, read Psalm 73. Read this Psalm before you come to church tonight. In order for you to understand what we are going to speak about, the subject we are going to deal with, and the things which seem to be injustices, you know that the servants of God face. They suffer because of the thorns that they have in the flesh in order for them not to become proud. That's the faith. When you are in the faith, when you please God, you have the assurance, you have the conviction. It doesn't matter what people say or they don't say. It doesn't matter. You do not pay attention at all to this world or to the people who live in the world. You live in your faith, at peace with God. When we are in the rational, intelligent faith, we are at peace with God and also with ourselves. That's the reality. When we are not in the rational faith, we are not at peace. It's because there is something wrong. Later on, we are going to be talking about this here in the temple at 8 p.m. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.